This is the DMT One to One Show, episode 40, on the 18th of December 2013. An interview with Thomas Ford, VP of Marketing and Communications at Sounddrop. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the DMT One to One Show, the show where I interview uh, interesting, cool startups and digital marketing projects. And uh, uh, this week, uh, it's a real pleasure to have uh, uh, Thomas Ford on the show, who is a VP of Marketing and Communications at Sounddrop. So, hi, Thomas, and great to have you on. How's it going? Uh, doing very well. Thanks for having me. It's great to have you. And it's the first time that actually we have Sound Drop uh, on the show, which is uh, 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 strange, actually. <laughs> I should have had you guys on uh, earlier earlier in the year, but it's uh, great to have you on. Uh, very close to Christmas. So first up, uh, give me uh, an overview of what Sound Drop is for people that may not be familiar with the company and uh, where you started out. Sure. So, uh, well, first of all, you know, it's, it's right near Christmas, but it's been a big week for us, obviously, uh, releasing a new Spotify app and the new Android app. So uh, I think this is a great time to, to be able to, to get on. So Good thanks time. again. Uh, but basically, Sounddrop, you know, we started off uh, as an app within uh, Spotify, but we didn't really set out to build just uh, this app within Spotify. We actually built a real-time platform for social listening. Yeah. So uh, if you saw recently, we, we announced uh, the Deezer integration. And before that, we have a web player uh, as well. So basically, if you listen to music with Spotify and your friend listens to music with Deezer and you know, I listen only uh, with YouTube, we can all join the same listening room together yeah. and listen to music and chat with each other. That's really what we were trying to build, a real social layer for music. And... Uh, that's, that's what we've actually been able to deliver. Um, sure. We've been most famous, I think, for artist events we've done. Um, certainly that's been, been nice, and that's really scaled up in the last year. We've, we've done 225 artist events this year. That's great. And we did eight in all of the fourth quarter last year. Sure. And so, so uh, tell me a little bit about how the company evolved from being uh, primarily known as a Spotify app to branching off to, to, to become a standalone uh, company and app in, in its own right. So, you know, how did that process come about for you guys? Well, it was, it was very natural, actually. We, we were looking at what was in the market. Um, we saw that there was an opportunity to really create a, a social layer on top of these personal music streaming services. Yeah. yeah and that's what our team built. Sure. And, and looking at... Uh, of course, the landscape of this uh, type of applications as well. Uh, one of the core things that we were actually talking about on the show uh, a couple of weeks back was the fact that uh, uh, you know you guys have been able to build this ecosystem on on, on top of uh, an already existing licensing frameworks of users that are using a licensed service. So that's really the key thing because, of course, you incorporate uh, a service that's provided by somebody else as a streaming, but you, you add a layer of experience over that. But you also don't have to embark on on taking on the licensing costs, which is also really helpful, right? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I mean, you know, the Spotify platform and now also, you know, the Deezer app platform, I mean, they solve the biggest problem startups ever had to face in the music industry. And that's been a huge win for us. So yeah. um, I don't know how a music startup survives uh, if they have to go down the licensing route. Yeah, it's very difficult. Uh, you know, we, we've seen the rounds of funding that, <laughs> that Deezer and Spotify have taken in the last few months. So uh, we understand how much uh, how much capital is involved in doing that. And so uh, looking at, uh, uh, you know, the evolution of the platform, of course, you, you're talking about the new Spotify app. First of all, let's talk about that. Uh, so what, what has uh, changed? What has evolved uh, within that? Sure. So I think the most, you know, if you've never used uh, Sounddrop before, you're going to go into Sounddrop today and you're going to enter a room that has a lot of new features and functionality. So you're going to see that there's, well, obviously there's what we're already famous for, uh, the, the chat and the kind of collaborative uh, voting enabled playlist. But then you're also going to see that there are there, we can have events in the room. So we've already had events, but now we have a proper way for you to know there's an event coming and for you to RSVP and just some of the basics around you know, bringing you back into the event. You'll also see that there are top tracks for every room. So it's like a chart yeah. uh, of, of the top favorite tracks for each room. And you can actually follow that playlist and get it updated every week. Uh, with the top discoveries. So you're always going to be uh, current with what's happening in a yeah. particular genre or with a particular artist. Uh, and then also for, 
for select admins, uh, we're also going to have uh, the first phase of our insights rollout. So you'll be able to actually see what are the key metrics for your room that you've built. Now, how many streams are you generating and how many listeners are coming in? And you can really start to get a sense of, of what you as this sound drop room owner uh, have been able to drive. And we also have uh, a tab for related rooms. So you can keep the journey uh, you know, going on and you can find other great communities that are thriving and, and listening to a lot of great music. Yeah. Yeah, sure. And um, you mentioned uh, a second ago, you know, insights and looking at, uh, of course, how the room performs, which is a key metric. Of course, if you're looking at, uh, you know, artists uh, looking to use the service and labels looking to use it to promote a release as well. So, uh, can you talk maybe about uh, one or two examples of artists that have made really good use of the of the platform and that you that have really good, had a really good response from the community in Soundrop as well? Absolutely. I think you know, if I, if I look at it, one of the best events we've had so far. Uh, there are two that really stand out in my mind. One uh, is, was with Zed. And early on, we realized the kind of potential of the platform. Zed came on, and he had 6,100 real-time listeners wow. for the room. But then the nice thing was, over the entire time that the campaign ran, he was only in the room for an hour, you understand. But you know that throughout those days that the room was featured and the traffic was going to the room, he had a quarter of a million visits. And, wow. you know, the kind of streams that generates and the kind of conversation, it, it's pretty amazing. And, and we saw that people actually stayed in the room. Yeah. So, you know, from, from the, the sort of effort that Zed had to make was very minimal. But the benefit and, and keeping his fans engaged, uh, that was pretty amazing. Uh, and then we, of course, had Imagine Dragons this summer. Uh, they had, I think they had, you know, well, I can't give the exact stream number that it generated, but it was quite impressive. And uh, obviously their fans uh, were, were super engaged. Um, and then I guess a few months ago, we actually had a chat with uh, the social media manager for One Direction. So not even the guys from the band, but that still had more than 50,000 chat messages. That's amazing. That's amazing. It was pretty crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Anything with that brand on uh seems to do very very well these days <laughs> you know we, we weren't complaining i can assure you I, know, I was in china and even there i could see massive billboards of them advertising cars and all sorts of stuff so it was just like incredible and uh, so uh, looking at the android app uh, you know we talked about the spotify app but uh, uh, what was your situation before I, I, i'm not an android user so i haven't used the sound drop app on android before uh it, has it evolved a lot in the, in the latest iteration well actually this is the first time we've properly released the android version right so it's always been in beta for us, and, and part of that was just uh, where we were in terms of, of the Spotify integration there. But now I think it's at a sufficient, um, high enough quality that we really feel we can release it and let everyone tune in. And of course, it's what you know and love of from Soundrop, the chatting and the voting and the playback. Uh, the nice thing with the Android app is that you can choose whether you want playback from Spotify, if you have a Spotify premium account, or Deezer if you have a, a premium plus account. Uh, that allows you to stream over mobile. So it just if you're already paying uh, your ten dollars a month for each of those or for any of those services, you can download this other app, Sounddrop, and you'll actually get more value out of that that same amount of money that you spend each month. Yeah, absolutely. And the, <clears throat> the fact that you integrated uh, uh, Deezer must have been a real boost as well for uh, the platform in the sense that uh, if you're looking at mobile. Uh, a lot of the services that are uh, related to Soundrop uh, are for premium users only. So, of course, on Spotify, you are restricted to a pool of, uh, we don't know how many. Uh, they haven't <laughs> updated the numbers in, in a long time, but uh, Hazard, in a guess, uh, maybe like seven and eight million uh, paying subscribers. Uh, and adding the other five million plus uh, that Deezer has, then it almost doubles the reach you have as a platform, right? Well, absolutely. Now, in, with Spotify and with Deezer, you know, it's open for everybody. So we're not limited on the desktop side of sure, things to of just premium. But it really does, from the mobile side, it, it helps us greatly. And, of course, Deezer has a tremendous mobile footprint. Yeah. Um, so this is really, you know, obviously having, having the Android app has been something that we have recognized, something we have to get into the market. We've had it as the beta. Now it's really <coughs> something that, that we're ready to take forward and really try to grow. So it's very exciting for us and, of course, being able to work with Deezer and with Spotify, I mean, two tremendous partners. It's uh, we're pretty lucky there. Yeah, and and did that did that come from the community as well? Did you see a lot of requests from uh, users of other systems that wanted to be able to use Soundrop? 
Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. We, we get a lot of feedback from our, our uh, user base, whether it's about, you know, which mobile platforms they want. And, you know, of course, uh, when we released the iPhone app, of course, the first 10 comments to that were all, where's the Android app? And now we can deliver that. And I'm sure when we release the Android app, uh, you know, now that it's out, I'm sure the first comments uh, are going to be, when's the Windows phone coming out? Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. But, uh, but that's okay. I mean, we, we want to hear from users and we want to give something that they are going to love and they can help us uh, make sure we're prioritizing the right things. Sure. Finally, let's talk about the uh, monetization aspect, of course. Uh, so uh, still a relatively early stage for you guys, mm -hmm. but uh, right. uh, are, are you looking at more of a B2B experience, uh, looking at insights and uh, potential uh, you know, label relationships and brand partnerships around rooms? Uh, or do you think there, there's space for a B2, B2C component as well in the service? Well, it's interesting because a lot of what, what you're addressing were, are things we're looking at. Yeah. I think uh, definitely we see the brands as a huge opportunity. Uh, they, we can provide this kind of a, a very engaging experience with a, an artist, and, and the, that gives the brand something very, very special uh, and a way to tap into the fan base of that artist that you know, normally they wouldn't be able to do with just an ad or, or something else. Yeah. So I think we're bringing a lot of value to the brands. But we're also looking at many other ways. We see a number of roads uh, to revenue, and it's really about you know, which ones do we prioritize and which ones can we incorporate while maintaining a wonderful experience for the user. Uh, because that's first and foremost what we're trying to do is grow the user base and make SoundDrop a great social destination. And uh, to the extent that certain uh, revenue opportunities support that, it's wonderful. Yeah. But uh, I wouldn't expect us to, uh, to uh, risk having a great experience in order to make more money. That's not our, our, our goal. We want to make a great user experience first. Sure. Well, it was a pleasure having you on. And again, it's uh, sounddrop.com. You can find that on their own site or you can uh, look for the mobile application or you can find that on your Spotify client. Uh, if you look through the apps, you'll definitely find that on there. Uh, thank you so much, Thomas. And uh, hopefully we'll catch up uh, in a few months time and, and see how things are going. Wonderful. Thanks for your time today. And thanks so much for listening to the DMT One to One show. Uh, the show comes out every week. Uh, we feature some of the best uh, startups uh, and uh, in more, most interesting mus uh, music marketing projects. Uh, so uh, thanks so much for listening. Have a great week and until next time. Yeah.